Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be, be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of our sins, we may persevere in holy living and be made full heirs of your promises. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him, My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations which he entered into with Abraham and by his oak to Isaac. Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, 
and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, we hear in the readings, the, the Gospels are, are continuing to be intense as we uh, enter into Holy Week. Uh, we hear from uh, the book of Genesis, chap chapter 17, and uh, from St. John's Gospel, chapter 8. Uh, the author is focused on this. If today you hear God's voice, just open your hearts. Don't close them like mine. Sometimes I close my heart to God, even yet today, as uh, ordained priest. Uh, there's going to be, and it, it just in uh, the world, there are hearts, human hearts, they're just stony. They're just, sto it could be pride, a prideful heart turns to stone. It's hard. It's, it's hard. And, and God just can't get into a relationship with this kind of a heart. But a, a loving heart, of course, we know, is flesh. There's something about a, a loving heart, a, heart a, a capacity to love, that God can enter into a relationship. How does this happen? All kinds of ways. But especially prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Don't ever give up praying. And we hear this. That's uh, in the season of Lent. There's always that focus. Uh, we, we deepen our prayer life, and that's good. And we have to understand, sometimes, and I forget this, is that prayer, uh, in order to head into this relationship, we know that any relationship, communication is important, <laughs> for sure. Communication is important. So for a, a baptized Catholic to communicate with God, we have to pray. Sometimes it's a formal prayer. Sometimes it can be informal, spontaneous, pray individually, pray as a group. Whatever it looks like, that's talking. There's a, a dialogue going on there. I pray to God. He listens. Then one of the things I struggle with, I have to shut up. I talk too much, and even in prayer. So I've got to be quiet and listen to what God is speaking. So there's a dialogue going on there. It's a dialogue of love. I try to put it into words, but those always fall far short. It's more like a, a dialogue, a, a, a talking a heart to heart. Eventually we get to that point. That's how important prayer is. Uh, and the author goes on, it is important to allow ourselves time to find a quiet space so that we can prayerfully listen, deeply listen to God speaking with us. And what he has to say is so beautiful how much he loves us. Uh, I, I, and over the years as priests, we always struggle. And, and you know, walking with uh, other uh, disciples on their journey, Father, it's so hard to pray. I know. Keep praying. It's hard for me, too. Father, I just can't focus. My mind is thinking of the new uh, pro spring football league. I know. Keep praying. Uh, sometimes um, I fall asleep. Don't tell anybody. But I fall asleep praying the rosary. I do too. Keep praying. All kinds of things. My prayer wasn't answered, God. I didn't win the lottery. Keep praying. It might not have been the wrong thing to pray for. But whatever, it, you, you understand. Keep praying. And there's going to be days, oh, it connects. I, I love our baptism font in the main church. When prayer connects, it's like this flowing water in our, in our souls and in our hearts. We made the connection. It might be only a, a, just for a millisecond. 
I've been there. Or it might be for a while. Stay in that moment. Oh, prayer is so important. So that's what is going on. And we have a beautiful, beautiful example in that first reading. And we know the story of Abraham. He responded to God by being faithful to him. He heard the voice of God. He heard it in his heart, I mean, uh, mind, heart, and he made those connections. And, and he was blessed. And, and, and he was focused. He didn't have any other gods in his life. He turned to the one true God and was blessed. So that's the important uh, prayer. And then in the gospel, uh, to keep God's word, we have to hear it and truly listen to it. You know, we hear the priests proclaim the gospel. We hear the lectors do a great job uh, uh, of the readings. So we hear the physical noise, but that's God speaking to us. Those aren't our words. We just read them on, in, in scriptures. But that's God speaking. So we hear it up here, and I say I got a few brain cells that I try to process that in my whatever capacity I have. Try to understand that. Sometimes I do some reading with spiritual help resources because I don't fully understand all scriptures but I do the best I can and then eventually as time goes on guess where that goes in here into the heart I'm telling you what you make that connection it's hard to do I've took it's taken years I'm still learning how to do this Uh, but boy when it connects you know I can't even put it into words it's hard to even explain the beauty of that moment so that we're always trying to do that. But we have to listen. It's tough. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, The world today, it's always been like this. For Catholics, it's hard to find. We're so uncomfortable with silence. Even just for a little moment, we're so uncomfortable with just being quiet. Just quieting down. You know? Uh, even quieting our brains down, because my brain keeps going all the I'm always thinking. So it takes a while to quiet down, to get into to listening, uh, to hear. And, and so it requires uh, doing this. It takes discipline. Uh, sometimes I even pray to the Holy Spirit, oh, help me. I'm going to dive into prayer. I don't know, however you want to say that. Um, then, you, you know, mind and heart uh, has to be open. We, you know, ask for the gift of a humble spirit, a humble fleshy heart, and then a willing to learn. I'm 63 years old. I'm still learning all this about God and faith, but I'm willing to be open to learning. And so it's okay to pray for the grace to be open to life and love with, with an, a, a great heart to, uh, for a capacity to love, and we'll hear God speak. Uh, personal prayer with God, just, just remember that I talk a lot, I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, just remember that uh, personal prayer with God will always, always, always lead to beautiful, loving hearts. You have beautiful, loving hearts. Because we're praying right now at this very moment, and, and it's beautiful. So thank you for doing that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And together we stand as we continue our Lent journeys and observances. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord this morning. That the Lord may bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life, uh, like our, our religious women, that they do that with generous and open hearts, and especially for women to, uh, uh, as they uh, discern uh, God's call, that I always encourage the, the, the school girls here at the school to, to think of it as being beautiful brides of Christ. That's such a, a, a beautiful image. That right now they can be brides of Christ to enter in religious life. Boy, we need, we need priests and religious. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who govern in this world may receive the assistance of Almighty God in performing their duties. One of the main ones, build lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. 
For those whose lives are darkened by the shadow of sin or doubt, let us pray to the Lord. And we're excited that we're praying for uh, all those preparing to receive the Easter sacraments at the Easter Vigil, uh, entering the Catholic Church here in the uh, uh, parish. We have our CIA, or there are nine uh, men and women. Five of those are going to be uh, baptized. And then there's 12 children that are going through our CIA that they're going to uh, enter uh, in, into the church. And I think it's four or five of those children are going to be baptized. There's going to be a lot of water splashed all over. Uh, uh, so uh, we're praying for them. We're excited for them. Uh, and you know what? That their hearts, and they are, you can tell, their hearts are ready uh, to enter into this relationship with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and then just in the quietness of our hearts, our own per personal prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father this morning. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray our Mass intention this morning is listed for Anna Wortman. Let us pray to the Lord. God of abundant blessings, please hear the prayers we offer you for the sake of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, Jesus, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the author of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life of the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O body, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your loving mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you fed, feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two.